Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 14th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I've got a quick diary today by Jan. He uh, compared uh, the number of web servers in Ukrainian IP address space before and after a re- Russian invasion. Now, the decrease is actually uh, notable, but uh, probably less than most would have expected. Only about 12% of the pre-war total web servers are no longer reachable, which uh, given the large uh, physical destruction and of course some of uh, the uh, distributed denial of service attacks and such is actually a rather small number. Comparatively speaking, the Russian internet actually lost more web servers. However, uh, that is uh, not so much, of course, uh, the result of physical attacks or denial of service attacks, but likely more the result of some of the political effects like sanctions and also some of the deep hearing that has happened either from Western or Russian ISPs. And this decrease in connectivity probably doesn't account for the effect of Starlink, which has been deployed in parts of Ukraine, uh, because Starlink typically uses NAT and can't easily be used uh, to expose web servers. And of course, they probably wouldn't show up as part of the Ukrainian IP address space. And then just a quick follow up uh, on yesterday's Microsoft Patch Tuesday. The big uh, vulnerability here that uh, everybody's talking about is CVE 2022-26809. That's the RPC vulnerability. No exploit yet. A lot of chatter on Twitter about uh, people working on exploits, but having difficulties actually coming up with a working exploit. I'm totally guessing here, but I think we probably have till sometime next week before an exploit is released. I highly recommend you're applying this patch and I'm talking about the entire patch for the month uh, before the weekend. It'll likely significantly improve your chances of having a quiet weekend. And the reason I say just apply the entire patch, don't just focus on this RPC patch. There are a number of other important patches, like about a dozen different sort of printer spooler patches. There are the DNS vulnerabilities that are being addressed and others, the NFS vulnerability, for example, which also could potentially be a big deal. So just roll it out and get it over with. And then didn't get to it yesterday, but we also got Adobe patches, most notably for a PDF reader and Adobe Acrobat, but also affected Adobe Commerce, After Effects, and Photoshop. Also, CISA added a number of old Adobe Flash vulnerabilities to its list of currently exploited vulnerabilities. Those vulnerabilities go back to 2014-15. Not really sure how significant this is anymore these days. And then we also got an update for Apache Struts. And what's sort of interesting here is that this is actually an update for an older vulnerability kind of that uh, we thought was a patched CVE 2020-17530. Now, apparently it wasn't completely patched. There is a new CVE now for the remaining uh, vulnerability, uh, CVE 2021-31805. The problem here is the object graph navigation language or OGNL and how it's being dealt with if you are essentially uh, exposing your code to untrusted input that is formatted using OGNL. The notes here are actually uh, sort of interesting uh, to this patch stating that the strut space doesn't necessarily consider this a real vulnerability and they're only patching this here because of the prior patch that they released, which wasn't complete, but 
developers basically should get their act together and uh, properly validate input before they just uh, parse random OGNL. Given that exploits are available for the older vulnerability, I definitely uh, would pay attention here and upgrade if you think that you may be vulnerable. And uh, as so often, I hope you kept notes from prior struts patching. Well, then I forgot to mention earlier about uh, just a little postscript here on uh, the uh, RPC vulnerability. Remember, this is not just port 445, also exploitable via 135 likely and various uh, high ports. Uh, then in some cases, even via HTTP, HTTPS uh, using various ports if you decide to install IS with uh, the right or wrong uh, plugins. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.